Hey everyone, this is Artie the Vintage Stitcher. Hi, how is everyone doing? Okay, so back for another tutorial. Excuse the mess on my sweater. We've been cutting in styrofoam. Um, this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make these cute little, like, stand-up box cube finishes. These are super, super cute. They're super, super easy. Um, they're a little messy, but they're fun. They're fun, they're almost foolproof. Um, I'm going to show you a few different, you know, this one wasn't, isn't perfect. Um, I, of course, you know, I, I'm a terrible mathematician when it comes to figuring out where to start on my projects and stuff like that. I'm always kind of cattywampus on my projects. So I had to really kind of wiggle th things around and stuff like that. So, but you know what? These are such fun, fun projects to finish and such cute finishes. Um, I'm also going to give some tips and tricks on this. Um, I, you might not see them in the, in the two, four tutorials, but definitely, you know, you could definitely use them. So if you're loving the tutorials and you're loving the new format, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, um, join the, join in our little community. We're having so much fun here. We're learning a lot. Um, I'm having a blast doing these tutorials. I'm telling you, it really kind of brings my weekends to the next level. I feel like I'm connecting with everybody and um, I have somebody to talk to. So let's get on with it. So this was my sample. This was the Rejoice ornament that I had finished um, a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'm going to go through a little bit of math with you guys. I know, I know, I don't do math very often. So the, the one we're going to do today is this cute little country house um, needleworks December cottage of the month. Okay, so when I measured this little guy out, it was an odd size, but that's all right. So it was like five inches, five inches by four and a half inches. All right. I cut my styrofoam six inches. I wanted it more square. Um, and that's okay. You can cut your styrofoam any size you want. If you want, you know, um, if you only want to do an inch all the way around or that half inch all the way around is what, and that's what I did on this one. This one is about a half inch all the way around. Um, that's just a personal preference. If you only want a quarter inch all the way around, if you want an inch, if you want it perfectly square, whatever you want. So what I did was I wanted, um, I kind of rounded up. I went to a six inch square, okay? So I did put interfacing on the back um, just to kind of hold these stitches in place a little bit better. I drew my six inch square. I measured it out. And you're gonna see where that six inch square is gonna come in hand when we start placing things, okay? So we are running a little close to the edges of what we have to work with but that's okay. Um, that's all right. We're going to work with that. So we have our styrofoam blocks. I'm going to have to piece two together to make a square. We have some a batting. Doesn't matter. Just scrap batting is fine. I have some fabric. Um, and I'm very, very generous with my fabric. And I'm going to show you in a minute why. Um, I'm very generous. So I cut a big piece of fabric and um, normally I'm all willy-nilly with my edges of my fabric. This time, in, in this situation, I kind of want it relatively square, rectangular, or whatever. I want my my edges to be a little neater, and I'm, it, it's all going to make sense. And I give it a good press, so I want it nice and um, neat and wrinkle-free. I have my trims and my buttons and have like my little feet going here and stuff like that. Those keep rolling away. And I have pins. Now, when it comes to the pins, you're going to want a full, I don't know, hopefully I can show this, a flat head pin. Okay. And these can just be a utility pin. So you just want a flat head pin because you want them to bury as much as possible. You do not want anything with a ball on it because they're not necessarily all going to get covered up. Okay, 
so you want something flat. Now, I have seen these where they've taken decorative ball pins and used it, you know, where you've got like the pearl pins and stuff, and they've used the pins and used it um, as decoration, and that is beautiful. Um, so, you know, you could take you could take the pin portion and you can run with it a little bit, but I have just utility pins and um, that's what we're going to be using. Okay, so we have all of that. The first thing we have to do is, and I pre-did this because there's styrofoam everywhere. If you can find a six by six block, great. If you can find one, otherwise you do have to cut one or you have to make one. So this is not going to be quite six inches deep. I'm okay with that. I think it turns out to be like four and a half. So it's going to be like a six inch by four and a half. Does not have to be exact size. Okay. Take my hot glue gun and I just put a puddle of glue. I had it on the high temp glue and I burned myself on my sample. So now um, I recommend low temp. But oops. See, I'm just kind of, just kind of sandwich it together. It's going to stay. It's going to stay. See, it stays. All right. So this is where you load your glue gun. All right. <laughs> and you take your piece of batting. So I kind of center my batting on here. And I kind of flip it. Kind of flip it. And this does not need to be perfect, okay? So what I'm going to do is, and you can stretch this stuff. Stretch it because you want to cover this like a present. We want to put a nice layer of batting between the styrofoam and what we're working with. But we don't want a ton of bulk. So what I do is I kind of give it a little tug so that it kind of reaches around on both sides, okay? And I'm just going to glue that. And this is where I burn myself. Because, because I stick my hands like this and I just whacked myself. So, do this other side. Nice little layer. And it, it, this is just, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because it's all going to get covered up, okay? So now we don't want this bulk over here on this side. So here's what I do. I take my scissors. What do I do with my scissors? Of course, I moved my scissors. Oh, there they are. Hang on. I got to move. I'm never totally prepared for this. Okay, so I'm going to just cut these corners out. All right, just going to cut them out. Cut them out because you just don't eat the bulk of it. It gets to be too much. So then you're just going to have a flap like this that you can kind of stretch and coat cover. Okay. So I do that to this side. And if you have some edges of styrofoam that are showing, don't stress about it. This is just kind of you know, a, a general coverage. So then I give this kind of a pull. Let me throw some glue down. And I kind of glue that. Don't worry about those edges. It's all okay. All right. Give this a little tuck and pull. Stretch that out a little bit. And use your glue gun. Okay. So then generally what I do with the, these little pieces is I just throw them on the front. I just glue them on the front or, you know, so that you're not wasting. I don't like to waste. So a little bit of glue, stretch it out a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't have to be completely covered. It's just kind of just takes the roughness away, okay? 
this went much faster on high temp, but yeah, I was swearing. So low temp is the way to go, even though it's not. Okay. Ta-da. It looks rough. That's all right. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. So this is where this side is not the side that we're going to put our, our cross stitch on. That's the side we're going to put our fabric on. Okay. That's going to be our back. This is the side we're going to put our cross stitch on because it's nice and smooth. And that's the side that's going to be showing. So what I do is I take my cross stitch. See how I have my lines there, right? And I take my stitch and I kind of just set it on there. Hopefully you can see that. Kind of set it on there. All right, so there's not a whole lot of working room. Okay, there's not a lot of working room. Now, I could have done a smaller, a smaller block, but I'm gonna show you how to do this where it looks super cute and nobody's gonna be the wiser, all right? So what I do is I kind of flip it over and I start taking these flat pins and I don't use a ton of them. And at this point, this is where, now, I, if I were finishing this for a customer, I would do this, but for me, I'm lazy. I would dip this in some Eileen's glue and then puncture it into the styrofoam. Remember back in like the late 70s, 80s, 90s, those um, Hershner's catalog used to sell those styrofoam, styrofoam uh, beaded kit ornaments all the time and you know you put them together with like thousands of these pins well over the course of time and packing and unpacking of course um the pins would start coming out so what i used to do was i used to just dip it in white glue when i was doing them you know as a young housewife i'd just dip it in white glue and then stick them in there and then mine I, I had found mine lasted over the test of time. So um, that's just a little trick I had learned. So same thing with something like this. Um, and there's going to be other ornaments that I'm going to show you later on that I would do the same thing with. With anything with styrofoam and pins, definitely want to dip it in some glue. All right. So now what you want to do is you want to work in the opposite direction. Okay. And you kind of want it. You want to pull that nice and tight. Make sure that's a about straight you know me about straight is good okay so then you're gonna oops and it's slippery and then you're going to just pin that and i pin i'm going to show you here in a second i pin as close to the edges of the fabric as i can because when we bring this fabric in, we're going to cover that up. But may, we may not want to come all the way to this edge. We may want to just come in to this point. So I try and pin as close to the edge of the fabric as I can so that the pins are not going to show, but yet um, it's secure. Okay, so the, the, these edges, you're just wrapping like a present but you want them nice and tight and neat, okay? So this is where you bring your finger pressing in on both sides again, make sure they're nice and neat, okay? So you're bringing this in just like this and you're bringing your pins, oops. Good. I, might, I might end up get, having to get up and get more pins and you pin those corners, okay? And you pin those corners. See, just like a present. Nice, crisp. All right. And you do the same thing over here. And even though you just have a little bit of fabric to work with, that's okay. It's all right. So you finger press. Oops, let's get that a little tighter. Get that in there a little tighter. You don't want any like little wings sticking out. And if you need to use more pins, use more pins. You know, it, it's not a big deal. It's not a, 
competition to see who can use the least amount of pins. Okay, so now we have that pinned to the front. And I'm a little bit crooked. Okay, let's fix that. Let's just unpin that just a tiny bit. Give it a little bit of a, a wiggle and a pull and a tuck. And a, Is better, 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 better. Okay, better. All right. So now I'm gonna set my pins aside. <clears throat> my feet keep rolling off the desk. Okay. So this is where. <clears throat> so I have my folded, my folded sides on this side. You want to keep your flaps. Let's call them your flaps. Your folded pieces on your sides. Okay. Or if you're going to do them on your top and bottom, keep them on your top and bottom. But keep them to one side. Um, it's just going to give a more consistent look. But so I now I have my fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a little hem. And I'm just going to finger press this. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to take the top of this and I'm going to set it. Maybe if I show it this way, I'm going to give it a nice finger press, but I'm going to set it and you want equal amounts of, on each side, okay? Because you want these to be about the same. I mean, you could really get in depth with this, but okay, so I am going to go as far back as I can but I want to cover up those pins. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? So this is where we're at. So this is, and I'm going to take some more flat pans and I am just doing the corners. Now you can pin all you want and, um, and when I first started doing this, I used to pin, 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 pin. And then when I was all done, I came back and I would take the pins out. It's personal preference. It really is. So sometimes I throw a pin in this center just so that when I'm pulling on this, so you have your little pins there, okay? So then what you're gonna do is you're going to, I gotta flip it this way. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of give this a little pull because you want this to be nice and tight, but you don't want this end to like all of a sudden start pulling the fabric. You just want it nice and taut, okay? You take your scissors and you're going to cut a big part of that off, okay? Because you don't need that much. You need just enough to make... Oh, wait a minute here. <laughs> we are going to flip it like this <clears throat> oops whoops and we are going to cut here because we want just enough to make a hem I'm not that far in I'm gonna be able to cover that up no worries all right so then what you're going to do is you're going to bring this back and you're going to fold that hem here Okay, and you can wiggle with it. You can play with that hem. You can play with that, play with that, play with that until it's at the point where you like it visually. Okay. You're going to kind of give it a tug. You want it nice and smooth. So you're playing with this. I want you to be able to see this. You're playing with this hem. So that it's about the same distance from the edge 
as the top, okay? I'm gonna bring in a little bit more hem, just a little bit more. I'm gonna tuck it and I'm going to pin. See that mistake? It's in there. It's going to get folded in. Everybody makes mistakes. And I'm going to do... Okay. Oh, did my pin not take? Where did my pin go? Wow, you're just getting to watch me mess it all up. It's all right. If anything, you know I'm real. All right, and then we could put one in the middle. I'm gonna probably remove those at the end. All right, so now these middle pieces, they can get really bulky, all right? But you need them to kind of come up. You need, enough, you need enough fabric here to come up to this edge, all right? But it can get a little bulky, so you can kind of play with your favorite way of folding this mine i kind of i play with it and i tuck that edge in as tight as i can okay so i'm tucking this in as tight as i can and if you need to put a pin there which i have to do usually okay because you want this to be come across can you see how it comes across here and covers up that edge of that Ada fabric. And then what you're doing is you're bringing this back across, up, you might have to wiggle with this a little bit. And you wanna keep that even, okay? And you wanna tuck that in, okay? And put a pin right there to hold it. Don't worry about that raw edge. It's gonna blend in, I'm gonna show you. The important part is you want this little flap here to be inside the outside flap here so that when you pull this up and tuck this all in, it doesn't show, okay? This is where you take another pin and pin that all right now this may freak everybody out but here's what i do i take my iron let me get it warmed up all right and then i take this and i put a little little steam to it and what it does is for one it squishes down my box the box on the the styrofoam so it makes it nice and smooth okay and it also gives those edges a nice nice clean edge it's okay it's all okay it's not going to melt your styrofoam that much um it's going to melt the high spots which is okay i had a couple of high spots in here so now this side we're going to do it again and I'm going to fiddle around with this snipped part that, <laughs> that I messed up with, okay? This is the part I'm going to mess, I'm going to fiddle around first with because I want it to be covered up. So let's do that. Let me get my pins here. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tuck that in. Let's see, watch. I'm tucking that in as far far as I possibly can and giving that a nice finger press okay and then I'm bringing in this side and I'm keeping it level with this and I'm bringing that in as far as I can now see my little flap is not going to cooperate so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to pin this the nice thing about this is you can pin it and you have some extra hands so this is not going to cooperate. I'm just going to tuck that in, okay? Just gonna give that a tuck in, see how that works? And then you pull that up, kind of tuck that all in and put a pin there. 
Okay. Yeah, it's a little bulky. It's a little wrinkly. Bring your steam iron in. Give it a shot. It's not going to hurt anything. You can hear it crackling a little. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I have that little slip there. That's okay. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. All right. <clears throat> so I have this really pretty cute, like silver <laughs> ribbon to put around this. I was going to do this big silver bow and stuff like that. And then I realized you could see through it. So that is the only thing. And it's a personal preference. If you don't mind seeing through the ribbon, that's fine. I don't like to see through it. Um, I like that my ribbon is going to cover up some of this stuff on the sides, you know, and, and kind of fix some of that for me. So I pulled a red ribbon instead. Okay. So what I do is I start with my top and I position my ribbon where it's pleasing to me. Now, if you want your bow like right up front and you don't want to see the edge of that um, that fabric that's a personal preference or if your fabrics if, you know if, if you're able I love it when my fabrics come back further back here and I can run it down the middle um, like this one I had the same issue as this one so my edges are kind of kind of close you know what it doesn't bother me it, it really doesn't. Um, I like that the, the bow is kind of on, I can see the fabric on either side. This is a personal preference thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of eyeball the center. About, about, you know me, about. And I am going to drop a pin right in that, like that. Okay? Just to, just to secure it. And then I'm going to fold and I'm going to turn and it's going to cover up all those edges and I'm going to turn and I'm going to come back and I'm going to give myself a little bit of um, extra here. Okay, this we're going to make a bow. I'm going to try making a bow on camera for you guys. All right, see how it works out. And you can position this bow or this ribbon anywhere you want. See, now it's covering up that snippet that I made. It's covering up. It covers up a lot of mistakes, <laughs> which is kind of nice. I give it a little fold so it's got a nice finished edge. Not that you're going to see it. You don't see it, but, you know, I just, I don't know. That's personal preference sort of thing. Okay, so... And then I'm going to move this back just a little bit. And you want this nice and snug. Okay? You want um, you want this ribbon nice and snug. If you want to pin it all the way around, you can. That's that again, personal preference. If you want to start taking these pins out at this point, you can, you know, if you want to move them back here like this, so it's pinned further back and you feel this is more secure. Absolutely. You can do that. I've done that in the past too, you know, um, so so I've done it like this. My husband's outside snowmobiling in the yard. He thinks he's cool. <laughs> he keeps going up the hills in the yard. So this is what we've got. All right? How cute is that? It's all kind of pinned. It's pinned together. You're never, ever going to really get away from seeing pins. So you could take this one out if you want. Here is the other thing I've done. Ta-da. That's going to hold that in place. You can go through and you can put a little hot glue there. Or you can put Eileen's fabric glue there. You know, whatever you want. Um, I'm not opposed to glue. This is for me. So you're going to see some glue. You're going to see some glue going on here. Okay. So I like nice, fluffy, big, huge bows. Okay. 
So I have my, I have a little piece that I'm going to like tie everything off with. I have some skinny bows. I have some, I got it. These feet are going to roll away from me and you're going to see me chasing them around the table. Um, so I'm going to make, this is just a one-sided colored bow. I am just going to kind of eye it up how big I want my loops. Okay. I want my loops pretty big. So this is how I make my bows. I just kind of go back and forth. Yeah, maybe a little smaller. Kind of just eyeball how big I want my loops. When it's one color, you don't have to play with the twist. You don't have to play the twisting method. You can just kind of go back and forth like that. Okay. So I've got that. I'm kind of just going to stick a pin in it and hold it. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to do a couple of these. This one now is a two colored, so you got to do the twisty thing. Okay. Twisty thing. I'm going to do a couple there. All right. So I'm going to cut that off. All right. Stick a pin in that. Ah. Just so it kind of all holds together. All right. This one, I just kind of want to do, let's see. Let's just do a shoelace bow. I just want something cute. I just love mixing. I love mixing different ribbons. This one's going to have a little tail to it, okay? All right. So, taking all three of my bows. All right. And this is going to be handful, so it's going to be. So, I've got this bow on top of this bow, all right? And then this big one. I'm going to scrunch in the middle. Okay, can you see that? I'm scrunching it. Okay. Okay. And I'm taking these two little ones, and I'm going to scrunch those on the middle. Okay? I'm going to kind of position them the way I want. Now I'm going to take this little tie, and I'm going to kind of loop it around loop it around the center. Can you see my thumbs in the way? Of course my thumbs in the way. I'm going to loop it around the center. All right. I'm going to flip it around to the back and I'm going to hot glue this baby together. Um, I'm not even going to try and tie it in a knot. There is just no way. I'm going to pull it as tight as I can and I'm going to put some hot glue in there. I love hot glue. You guys are going to find that out. In most of my finishing, um, yeah, hot glue is like my best friend. So I'm letting that dry. Okay, hang on. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, hubby walked in, <laughs> so I had to say hi. We're making plans for dinner, figuring it out. Okay, so there I have a bow, okay? I have these little tags in the back, not a big deal. I am going to snip those off, put those a little bit more hot glue, and stick, ah! Low temp, I'm telling you, low temp is the way to go. Otherwise, I'd have blisters all over my hands, okay? All right. So, yeah, I haven't mastered glue yet. I can't, I've mastered sewing, but I have not mastered glue. So this is also personal preference. Now, you can place this bow right in the center. You can place it up front. You can place it further to the back, wherever you want. So I have this cute little snowflake and bell that I want to put on there. So I'm probably going to do like I did on this one and place it a little further back so I can put that snowflake and bell on. So I am going to turn this around so I can kind of see where my positioning is because I want it to be just right. I am putting this on. Now you can take pins. If you wanted to secure this with pins, you could definitely do pins at this point. Not me. 
I'm going to put a huge glob of glue right there. And I'm going to secure it with hot glue. All right. And then I'm going to do my snowflake right there. So you can, sorry, I'm sorry I'm kind of out of camera shot, but I do have to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gluing that all down into place. And I'm kind of holding it all down. And then I'm gluing my little bell on there too. My little rusty bell. So everything's getting glued on. You can definitely use pens. You can definitely use Aileen's glue if you want. You can use anything that makes you feel secure to secure your projects, okay? This is what I use. Um, if you're not comfortable using a hot glue gun on your projects, don't. Use what you're comfortable with. So this is a big one. Look at this. He's, she's kind of hard to get in the, the thing. Okay. So now you could leave it just like this. Th these are super cute. But of course I had these beads. I have these gigantic beads. Um, I bought one of those big, huge garlands from Hobby Lobby with the big beads. Not that I'll use the garland, but I wanted the beads because <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue some feet onto the bottom. So I'm just picking four, I'm just doing my four corners. And I'm just putting, and I liked the white ones. Um, the other, the other um, project had the natural beads on it. So I'm just putting, just gluing them on. Just holding that glue there for a few seconds. I put the hole down. I don't know. You can put them however you want. Um, everybody's different. Everybody's different. All right. So we're going to get those on. Last one. Oh no, the bell fell off. <laughs> I guess I'll have to re-glue that on. <laughs> Did you hear it tink on the table? <laughs> okay, so let me glue. See, the little bell fell off. Let me put that back on. Even hot glue is not foolproof. Well, hot glue and metal don't really go together. They don't really like each other. So, But that's all right. Okay, and there you go. There's our little project. I know it's a tough one to get in the in the shot, but if you pop by on Monday morning for the weekend in review, you'll get to see an up close picture of that. So, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, like I said, if you if you're loving the tutorials, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. We're going to be doing lots and lots of this kind of stuff on the channel this year. I really love having you guys here. I love having somebody to talk to on the weekends when I'm in my sewing room. So um, when you're out and about, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.